Today we're looking at notes 311, vertex form of a quadratic function. So vertex form of a quadratic function looks like so, and we have seen this form before when we were working with our transformations of our parent functions. But I just want to remind you that this a value out in front dealt with the vertical stretch and shrink as well as the reflect, if it's negative, it reflects over the x-axis. That h value dealt with the left and right movement, and that k value dealt with the up and down movement. Now the vertex is specifically defined as the coordinate h comma k. Now this can be a bit funky, but I want you to notice in here that we have x minus h. So that means to get the x value of your vertex, this h, notice I don't have the minus out in front. So that means whatever number you have right here, it's going to be the opposite of that number here. So if you've got a negative in here, this is going to be positive. If you've got positive in here, this is going to be negative. But that k value, we're just going to take it as it is. If it's positive, we keep it positive. If it's negative, we keep it negative. Now, as you remember, or should remember, the quadratic function is symmetrical, and its line of symmetry is at x equals h. So whatever the x value of the vertex is, that is your line of symmetry, x equals h. You should also remember if that a value is greater than zero, or in other words, if it's positive, if this a value is a positive value, then the graph opens up. It looks like a U shape. So that means that our vertex, if it opens up, is this lowest point down on the bottom. That means our vertex is the minimum value on the graph. If a is less than zero, or in other words, if a is negative, the graph opens down, the quadratic looks like a hill, and that vertex is the tip top point, so in other words, it's the maximum on the graph. Okay, so complete the following information about each function. So on this first example here, the vertex, remember you're going to take the opposite of whatever value is in here, so instead of negative 5, we're going to write 5, and we're going to keep this value exactly as we see it, negative 2, so that's our vertex. Is it a max or min? Well, this value on the outside is negative, so that means when it's negative, it opens down, looks like a hill, and that means our vertex is a max. Line of symmetry is always x equals, and then whatever the x value of the vertex is, so x equals 5. So in order to graph this, we're going to first plot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, our axis of symmetry here. So at x equals 5, and then we're going to plot our vertex, which is at 5, negative 2, so right here. And I want you to remember, this negative on the outside means it's been reflected over the x, so like the rough drawing is here, it's going to go upside down. So instead of going left 1, up 1, it's going to go left 1, down 1. And then, and then remember it's symmetrical, so it's also going to go right 1, down 1. And then it's going to go left 2, and instead of up 4, it's going to go left 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, down, since it's been reflected. So again, since it's symmetrical, right 2 and down 4. So that is our rough, whoops, sketch of our quadratic. So let's move on to the next one. Next one, vertex. Again, opposite of what's on the inside, so that's going to be negative 2, comma, and we keep this one the same, negative 3. Our max, this value out here on the outside, is positive. So that means it's going up, looks like a hill. I mean, excuse me, it looks like a U. It's got that minimum value 
doesn't have a maximum value because it keeps on going and going forever. And then the line of symmetry is x equals, our x value for the vertex is negative 2. So come over here to negative 2 on the x-axis. Start graphing your line of symmetry. And then our vertex is at negative 2, negative 3. So come down here. Now this guy has not been reflected over the x-axis, but what, it ha what has happened here is it's been stretched by 2. And remember, on the outside, that means a vertical stretch by 2. If it helps you to draw the tables, you can, but you should be able to do this mentally. What that means is your y values are multiplied by 2. So instead of moving left 1 up 1, we're moving left 1 up 2 because we're going twice as high. That's what that 2 on the outside does. And again, instead of going left 2 up 4, we're multiplying that 4 by 2. So we're going to go left 2 up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And same, since it's symmetrical, that point will lie right there on that side. So again, remember, you can do the tables like we learned from transformations in order to do this, but you should be able to do it in your head. If you have any questions about it, we can talk about it in class tomorrow. All right, and that is it for this lesson. Have a wonderful day, and don't forget to submit that whisk.